Good morning from Thessaloniki, where we're boarding our bus in just a short time to head east to Philippi in Kavala, ancient city of Neapolis. There goes a cappuccino, these ubiquitous coffee machines, very nice. You can pick anything you want, espresso, cappuccino, Americano. Oh, I thought it was so, oh. Yeah, I see what you mean. It's like this. You said about, uh, uh, all right. Morning. Morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow your love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. And one day my mom was getting ready to go shopping. It was 1953. And she turned on the radio while she was getting her keys and her purse and cleaning the kitchen. And she said, Steve, all of a sudden I heard this voice. It was so urgent and passionate. She said, I stopped what I was doing and his, the, the, the way he was delivering this talk just caught my attention. And he told me something I'd never heard before, that Jesus loved me so much that he came and died on a cross for my sins. And that if I would believe in him, that I'd be saved from my sin. Or she said, I just fell on my knees and I started to cry. And I asked God to save me like that man had just explained it. The voice that she heard was the Reverend Billy Graham. There are going to be times where the storms are so bad on the outward that you're going to mash to pieces and drown. But as you stay with my... We're on page 368 in the Magnificat. O God, come to my assistance, O Lord, my case to help us. After a little over an hour driving through this beautiful countryside, we pulled our two buses into a very nice rest area, beautiful location too. It seemed very decadent with all the chocolate and desserts and foods. Look at this. People said, oh my goodness, this is a dangerous place to be. But we had a nice stop and... Uh, How are you? They got a free sample of cookies here. passage in Turkey is a city named Troas and Paul came to Troas then he came across to Neapolis that's Kavala where we're going to go next for lunch after this and it said they landed in Kavala and from there to Philippi which is the leading city of the Macedonians a Roman colony and they are staying in the city for some days on the Sabbath we, that means Luke was with them, because Luke is writing this, and whenever it's a we, that means Luke is together. So, we went outside the gate, the major city of Philippi is up there, this is outside, because there were not enough Jews at the time to have a synagogue, so they would come out here by the water. And on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to this river, where they were supposing that there would be a place of prayer, and we sat down and began to speak to the women who had assembled. A woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple fabrics, a worshiper of God, was listening. And the Lord opened her heart to respond to the things spoken by Paul. And when she and her household had been baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. So that's what happened here. This was a, Paul's first European convert.
at this point? This is the Zagatis River. When Paul first came onto European soil, he came to Philippi, met the Jewish people out here having a prayer service, and Lydia, a dyer of purple fabrics, converted and was baptized here in this river. And we're here to celebrate Mass and to renew our baptismal vows here. Okay, the renewal of baptismal vows. Here where St. Paul baptized Lydia. Going to communion over the little bridge and back over another little bridge. It's a beautiful Greek Orthodox church dedicated to Lydia. St. Paul, here he is, came here and baptized Lydia. Here's an icon of her. This church has magnificent frescoes. Here's Paul sleeping, the vision from the man from Macedonia. Paul awakes and comes across to this side, to Philippi. And there he meets Lydia. And you can see the river down here. Lydia baptizes her. Then in Acts chapter 16, he releases a girl from a demon, which makes everybody angry, and they put Paul in prison. And then there's a earthquake, and Paul is released from prison. And the Philippian jailer says, what must I do to be saved? In Acts chapter 6, 31, 30 and 31, and then there's all, Paul comes out and they're baptized and become Christians too. Beautiful. And then here is all about different baptisms in the New Testament. And the ultimate baptism is Jesus being baptized by John in the Jordan River. So this is the prison of St. Paul. And as you can see right there, this is the prison that he was kept in. And this is where St. Paul was kept in prison with Silas when the gates were broken open and he was singing and he was released and the Philippian jailer said, what must I do to be saved? That happened right here. In... And Paul cast the demon out of her. So her masters and owners are very angry and they put Paul in this prison. I'm going to read it to you in Acts chapter 16. Well, we're now walking through the ancient city of Philippi. That was the Agora, the marketplace. Paul would have spent time right in there. All the shops were there. That was the main road, the main Roman road. Right there's part of it too, that went right through the town. And we're gonna be walking on part of that road down the mountain a bit. So here we are at the city of Philippi. Acts chapter 16, by the way. Here's part of the Roman road, the Ignacio, the Ignatian road. Via, there it is right there, Via. Agnostic Roman road we're walking on right now. prison over on the other side and the angel let me free and the and the uh, prison guard who had imprisoned me illegally asked me a question what must I do to be saved and I thought I'd tell you what I told him I'm walking in the footsteps of Paul he's exactly where he put his feet Wow right on the, the Ignatian way to Philippi I, I, I've just been to Philippi I'm on my way to uh, Neapolis Boston. Very good. I have to open up a second shirt. How <laughs> <laughs> about that? Yeah. Yeah. Folks, walking on the Ignatian Way, that's right where Paul walked between Neapolis and Philippi in Acts chapter 16. So they know they're walking in the footprints of Paul. Okay, in there, that's... Jim. We're walking in the footsteps of St. Paul. Right on the same stones he walked on. Here, here they are 
right here. I bet he stepped on that very one right there. Everybody enjoyed that I found this obscure site for them to go and walk in the footprints of St. Paul on the very stones that he walked on on his way to Philippi. We're now arriving in the beautiful seaside port of Neapolis in biblical times, but called Kabbalah today. And here is the memorial of St. Paul. Dressed up as a Macedonian, this is in Acts chapter 16. Please come help us. So Paul changes course, comes across from Turkey, from Troas, across from Turkey into Neapolis. Short way, Neapolis means the new city. And that is his first time he sets foot in European soil. And there you see him stepping off the boat. He's in Turkey there, he's in Greece on this side. And he's stepping off the boat into Greece and he's on his way to see Lydia who he's going to baptize. So there you see what this, this city is proud of the fact that Paul first set his foot here on European soil. I'd be proud of it too if it was my city. We're in Kavala, right on the waterfront. Look at that. Right out there is the water. That's where Paul came in and at first time the European soil right there. And these are all of our folks having lunch there, seafood and yogurt and Greek salads, unbelievable. And that Greek salad there, wow. <laughs> and the fresh bread. Fresh right. Greek yogurt. Well, we stopped here on the way to the airport for a nice respite, rest, glass of wine. Some people ate dinner, and uh, now we're heading to the hotel to go to bed. Uh, actually, going to the airport. Well, we stopped here at this nice hotel in Athens for a quick snack and a bathroom break before we head to the airport. Beautiful place and excellent food, but we're still full from that great seafood and kavala. We arrived at the Thessaloniki airport and we all took our no luggage and our boarding passes and went to our gate and we had a restful time there while we waited to board gate A3 on Olympic. We arrived back in Athens and got a little bit of sleep and then some are heading to back home and the rest of us, 20 of us or so, are heading to Rome for another four days in Rome. So we had a good time. What did you think of this trip? Oh my gosh, it was beyond expectation. Looking forward to Rome too. Everyone seemed very happy and there were a lot of compliments for this trip. If you want to join us, we're going to do it again in September 2020. For now, good night from Athens and on our way home. Right.